Are you lost when it comes to map animations in DaVinci Resolve? Well, today I'm going to guide you down the right path. We're going to be talking about making custom line animations like a dotted or dashed line, and even using your own custom logo or icon. Then we're going to add in starting and ending points and animate an object going across the path. Plus I'll demo a powerful new editor collection tool that does all this setup for you. In DaVinci Resolve, I just have this picture of a map and you can of course use any map that you want, but what we want to do is right click on it and convert it to a fusion clip. Then inside the fusion page, let's talk about the different ways to make a line animation. The first way most people are familiar with. You grab a background node, you'd merge that up over your media, and then grab a polygon node and connect that into the background. From there, you can just go in the viewer, and you can just click to add points, and you can draw across the screen, and in the inspector, up the border width, so now you have a line. Then just using the control, you can animate this on and off to get a nice line animation. That one's pretty limited, though, because it's only a solid line. Another option is the mask paint node. So if I do shift space, I can add that in and I'll connect this into the background node. Just like the last one, if I come up to the top and switch this to polyline instead of a brush, we can draw a line in the viewer. Under the brush controls, we'll want to set this to be solid. And under stroke controls, we can bring the spacing up so that way it is individual circles. You can even type in a higher value like 1.5 to get even more spacing. Up under brush controls, you can set this to be a square or even add in your own custom image. The issue with this one is that the rotation is level to the view at all times. If you're doing a dashed animation, you want the dash to curve up if the path goes up as well. So let's delete all of that and talk about the method that we're going to be using in this video. And that is actually using the text node. It's definitely not the first one that you would think of when making a map animation. If we add in the text node and merge this up with media in, in the text box, let's just add in a bunch of dashes to get started. Under the layout tab, under type, we have the option to change how the text is actually mapped to the image. Using the path option, we have the option to just draw a path inside the view, and now all the text is going to follow along that path. You can start to see where we're going with this. I'm going to hit undo a couple times and draw my actual path. Up on the top, we have all the controls for the polyline. When I'm done, I usually like to set this to be modify only. That way I can't add new points, but I can still come in here and do stuff like hit the smooth button to smooth it all out, or still move stuff around if I need to make a little bit of an adjustment. When we do that, you'll notice the biggest con about using a text node. We can't measure the amount of dashes it needs to fill in the entire path, so we'll just have to come into the text node and add more until it reaches the starting and ending point. It does take some playing around with because you might want to come down here and add some tracking just to add some spacing between it, as well as bring the size down. You know, do stuff like that. But again, we're still limited to just that dash shape right now or any other letter that you want to put in there. So let's talk about making your own shape or using your own logo as the path. First, let's create the shape. Let's add in a background node and then grab a rectangle as well. If I connect the rectangle into the background and view the background off on the left, I'm just gonna create a simple dash. So let's set the width to be one, so that way it goes across the entirety of the screen. And then just using the height, this is what we'll use to change the thickness of the dash. And now we need to come back to the text node. We need to tell this node to use that image that we just created instead of the letters. Under the shading tab, there is the appearance button. And we can switch this from text fill to be border fill. And that's just going to fill in that entire character with just a solid color. Back under the text tab, one thing with the dash is it's very narrow. Um, it has a really tall boundary, but, it, but it's extremely narrow. So instead of using the dash, I like to just use the letter A. So if I just add in a bunch of A's, uh, we can make that extend all the way through the path. Back under the shading tab, we have the option to change it from solid to an image or even a gradient. We're going to use the image option. That's going to add a input on our text node. So if we just grab our background and stick that into the text, it's going to apply that shape we created to each one of those letters. Since the letter isn't the same size as the image that we're giving it, we want to zoom in here so we can easily see one of these edges, and we just want to bring this mapping size down until it starts getting smaller. When that happens, we'll start to get some funky results, and that's because it's mirroring all the edges. Up a few controls, we want to change this image edges to black. Now bring this map size up as high as you can before that edge starts just eating away. So you can see that happens right about there, so we'll bring it down. And we'll leave that at about 0.3. When you're working with a 16 by 9 image with a letter A, 0.3 gives you a great result. Once we have that though, we can come back to the text tab, we can change the tracking, we can change the size, and then at any point if we want to make these a little bit more thick, we can just come into the rectangle node and change the height here to achieve that. Setting it up this way also allows us to use stuff like custom images. Inside the rectangle node, if I just bring the level all the way down so that way that background node is not outputting anything, we can open the media pool, grab in an image, and merge this up with the background node. Then in the text node, we can play around with the size and tracking until we get a bunch of the logos going across the screen. When doing this, a lot of times there's this sharp jagged edge. So if you go to the shading tab and come down to image sampling, instead of being on pixel, switch this to area. That way it smooths it out. It's not as noticeable from a distance. All right, I'm going to set that back so it is just our dashes that we created. Uh, bring the height down so it's not quite as thick. And then inside the text node, we need to add just a few more of the letter A just so it reaches the starting and ending point. Let's talk about animating this on and off now. 
In the text node, if we come down to the right on controls, we can grab the end and drag this down to get it to animate from left to right. Or if we use the start position, we can animate it from right to left, depending on how you set the path up. So on the first frame, add in a keyframe and then bring this value all the way down to zero. Then on frame 50, bring the end value back up and now we have a line animation. To point this out right away, you'll notice that we have a keyframe on frame 76. That's from the path we created. If at any point you go through and change the path on a different frame, it's going to automatically animate that, so then your path is moving all around. That's really annoying, so a lot of times what I do is just come to frame 76, whichever one I, I originally created it on, come to the Layout tab, right-click on the Shape Animation, and then do Remove Text 1 Path. That's going to get rid of the animation so you can still customize it on any frame, and you have your path, but it's not going to animate all around and be funky like that. So we've got our line animation coming on. Let's add in some starting and ending points. For this, you can use anything. You can download a location pin from online or draw your own shape inside of Fusion. In this case, I'm just gonna use a circle. Inside of Fusion, I'm just gonna grab all these nodes, shift them over, grab a ellipse mask as well as a background node, connect the ellipse into the background and the background into this merge node. We'll give this a nice orange color just for the location dropper. Then in the ellipse node is an easy way to change the size so it always stays a circle. You can right click on the height and do expression. Then drag this plus icon up to the width so that'll link those two controls together. So whatever you set the width to, the height is just going to copy that value. And then after this background node, add in a transform and we can just shift this over to the starting point of our path. Let's do the same thing, shift space, add in another transform, grab the output of the background node into that transform, merge that up and then stick this one at the end position. There's two ways to animate this now. You can either animate the size in both the transforms, so that way you could have one animate and then the other, or what I'm gonna do, just come into the ellipse node, go to frame 50, add a keyframe on the width, then go all the way to the beginning and bring this down to zero, so that way they both animate at the same time. And now that is animating on. Right away, let's go up to the spline editor, select the text and ellipse node, and click the checkboxes here. Select all the keyframes, press F on your keyboard, and then hit T to open up the easing controls. What this is all gonna do is flatten out the keyframes and make everything a lot less linear. Check out my video on five ways to bring your animations to life for more info on the spline editor. All right, once that's done, let's animate an object across this path. In my media pool, I just have this car icon that we're gonna use, and the first thing that we wanna make sure is that this resolution matches the resolution of our composition. Simplest way to do that is just to add in a new background node, merge this media over the background. If we view this on the left, you can see the resolution is gonna match. We'll wanna bring the size down of this car just so it fills up the frame. And then in the background node, bring the alpha down so that way we still have that transparency. If the resolutions don't match, it's not gonna automatically follow that path we just created. You'll have to go through and manually animate it for the whole composition. Not fun. Once you have that set up though, add in another transform node after this merge and merge that over your image. To start, let's just bring the size down just so we can still see what's going on. And now we need to go back to the text node. Right clicking on this animation, we just wanna hit publish so that way other tools can see that path. Then inside of this transform node that we just made, we wanna right click on the center X and Y and we wanna add a path animation. Then under the modifiers, we can come down, we can right click here and connect this path to the path in the text node. That's gonna snap it to the starting point. If we come back up to the path, we can right click on this displacement and then remove the path one displacement. Now this allows us to manually animate it along that path. So let's say we start at frame 10. We want to add a keyframe with it at the beginning and then come to frame 60 and add a keyframe with it at the end. So it's just going to follow that path perfectly throughout the clip. I usually like making it so the rotation matches the path that it's going on. So to do that, back in the tools tab, we want to right click on the angle, connect this to path one and then do heading. So that's gonna connect it to the path that we just created. So no matter where it is on that line, it's just gonna match that rotation. It actually look like it's going up and down hills. It's kind of fun. So under the spline editor again, we wanna select these keyframes and then hit F and then bring the ease in amount up. That'll make everything a bit smoother. If you want to, go to frame 20-ish, add a keyframe on the size, and then at the beginning, bring the size down so that way it doesn't start with the car on there. And again, we just wanna smooth out these keyframes. And this is the animation that we have. To finish stuff off, I like to do a slight pan across the screen or do a 3D camera effect. To do the pan, after the last node, add in another transform, zoom it in just a little bit, and then grab the pivot point. Put that all the way on the left side of the screen, add in a keyframe, then go to frame 50 or 60, and move this so it is all the way on the right side of the screen. 
Then in the spline editor, you want to smooth out these keyframes by clicking F. And now we just have a pan that follows the car. For the 3D effect, you can either use my Whip 3D camera tool from the editor collection, or I have a tutorial on how to create 3D screen effects. It's a different application, but all of the steps to create the effect are exactly the same. And like I mentioned, I have a tool in the editor collection to create these path animations. I have a full tutorial at the end covering how the Whip Path tool works. But I want to show you how much faster it is to use this tool instead of making it from scratch. So on the edit page, I have another copy of the map, and I'm just going to grab the Whip Path tool from the effects library and drag this above. This one can be customized from the edit page, but to draw the path, you'll want to go to Fusion. So you can just hit this Go to Fusion button. And when I'm customizing the path, I like to turn off point one and two, and then enable the preview so I can see the map below it. In the viewer, I'm going to delete the two existing points, and then just draw my own path. So I'm going to start up here, just draw it down, and just make the same shape that we just did in the last one. I'll switch this to be Modify Only, select all of them, and smooth them out. Then in the inspector, I'm going to turn on point one and two, come into the path controls, and I can switch this from dots, I can do a dash, solid, or I can do a custom icon. For that, I can connect my logo right into the whip path tool, and it's just going to automatically put that on the line for me. Once I get my line selected, I can come down to the point controls, and I can switch that between character, outline, pin, and custom. Let's leave this one on pin and give it a nice orange color. It also has the option to add in some additional points throughout the middle, but I don't want that in this case, so I'm going to turn that off. It has the animation right off the bat, very similar to the one we just made, but you can come into the anim engine and control everything about that. So we can turn off the out animation, we can keep the point animations on, we can adjust the overlap, all that stuff. But below that, we have the option for a custom icon. So if I enable that, I'm going to grab this car input and plug that into the custom icon input. And then inside the tool, I can change the size. I can offset it. It's automatically going to match the angle of the line. And then I can change stuff like where it starts on the path, where it ends on the path. I can animate the size at the beginning. And then customize how long this icon takes to animate across the screen as well as when it starts its animation. So customizing those around, you can see both of those scale on and the car drives across the path until it gets to the ending destination. Then you can come down to the shadow controls and add in a drop shadow just so everything stands out. You can see it's extremely easy to create path animations using this tool, and I didn't cover half the features, so definitely check out this video to learn more about that. Then click the link down below to learn more about Editor Collection and the more than 20 tools that it contains. It's a huge time saver and something every video editor needs. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll See you in the next one.